That's right. Back at it again, full custom hot dog here. And we're doing a Blu-ray review today. That's right. We're going to be talking about the wonderful, wonderful cult classic film. And still, in my opinion, criminally underrated to this day film, Tourist Trap from 1979, directed by David Schmoller, released by Full Moon, who have kind of a spotty track record with releases, as far as uh, I hear and know. The last one, from what I heard, had some footage missing, and some of it was out of order. And I had also heard that, I believe, about an 88 Films release also. Um, if you don't know 88 Films, they're a label in the UK. They seem to release a lot of the stuff that Full Moon put out, out here. And I think they normally do a little bit better job than Full Moon. They've also done stuff for Troma, so this is kind of a thing they do. And from what I understand, their versions are usually a little bit better. I don't know too much about their version of Tourist Trap. Before we get into some of those details, though, and of course, before we get into the movie, let's talk about the disc really quick, because this is fairly bare bones. You've got an audio commentary with a director, which is fine. He just kind of goes over some of the production stuff. Nothing crazy, nothing to, too much to write home about but I always do appreciate those commentaries. You get rare trailers, according to the back. I don't remember any trailers that were exceedingly rare here. And then you've got an interview with uh, with David Schmoller. Pretty okay release, however, it's going to be a, a B, I guess. I, I, I give it points for the commentary, I always do. But uh, it's a little lackluster. Some parts of the film look a little rough, and I don't think it quite pops as much as I feel like it could or should. Also, this film is loosely based or inspired by a short film the director did called The Spider Will Kill You. The director did this, uh, David Schmuller is his name, like I said. Uh, he directed that film in college. I think there was even a grant from the Directors Guild. And it's very similar to Terrorist Trap, sort of. It's about a blind man. I think he's living upstairs in a theater. And he falls in love with a mannequin that wants to kill him. Uh, according to IMDb, that mannequin is quite animated and deadly. So you, you have a lot of parallels there with Tourist Trap. And I feel like the best thing to do would be to release that with this as well. But again, Full Moon doesn't really go too big on their releases, which is a bummer because I love so many things they've put out and that they have under their belt. And I always never want to buy any of it because I feel like those releases aren't as big or crazy as they should be. I, and, and a movie like this, like, this transcends a lot of the stuff that Full Moon puts out in, in how great I believe this is, that I wish Arrow would release this. And I say Arrow because I think there is a little bit more that could be done in terms of cleanup and upscaling or the scan. I, I don't know too much about that side of it, but um, I also feel like... Releasing it with that film, The Spider Will Kill You, is something that Arrow normally does traditionally. The, some of the Cronenberg releases, they release some of his short films. So it's definitely not out of the question for them to do something like that. But I think it would benefit this film as well. Because this film deserves, I think, a much better release than what we're getting still. This, I think, is their second attempt. And it, according to the data, this looks better. I, I haven't seen the prior release. And when I say by data, I mean there's a site called DVD Beaver. And they break down the quality in terms of numbers. So you can look at the film size in terms of data size, how many megs, gigs, and versus, I think they do theirs by megs, versus what other releases. It's actually really cool. It's not something I use too often, but it does look like on paper that this release is bigger in terms of file size. And I, I that, that may not be representative of quality, but I feel like it should be from what I know about, about uh, technology and tech and file size I, I work in IT so to me that makes sense but again I could be wrong I did notice however I think the 88 films release that their the file size for their film was bigger so I think that one might actually have extra footage and again I'm not 100% sure feel free to correct me if I'm wrong I don't know too much about the difference between these releases so pretty okay release you can also get it for pretty cheap it's like a $10 buy I think maybe 12 either way is it worth it sure if you don't have the previous version, I'd say so. But again, I also can't speak to the state of it being cut or uncut. I don't know any of that. But I do know that this is a fantastic movie that everyone should see if you're even remotely into horror. I can remember seeing this movie playing at a video store that I used to go to all the time as a kid. 
I had no idea what this was, and it was absolutely terrifying. Now, something to take into account. So something else to take into account. This movie received a PG rating, because at the time there were no PG-13 ratings. And the director said that that's why this film probably failed, is because nobody wants to see a PG horror film, even today. Nobody even wants to see a PG-13 horror film. When you hear, when you see that a movie has been announced that it's going to be PG-13, people lose their minds. Like, oh, it's going to suck, it's going to suck. I get it, but I also don't fall into that category because you never know. It's kind of funny, though, because Prom Night initially had a PG-13 rating, and the studio believed in something similar, that nobody would see a PG-rated horror film. So they upped the violence and gore to get that R rating. And also, the Prom Night remake is the first PG-13 slasher in film history. So I guess they just threw tradition out the window and said, F it, F the R rating, and we'll just release it. I mean, back then, though, around the time that came out, I think 2008 or so, there were a lot of PG-13 horror movies, I think. A lot of remakes were coming. I think that's around the same time as The Fog. I could be wrong. I'm not, I'm not so much a historian. But... Nobody wants to see a PG-13 horror film nowadays. Uh, I can't imagine seeing one that's PG. But it's also crazy that it's got a PG rating. And, and we'll talk about some of that in a bit. But what is this film about? Well, IMDb says, A group of young friends stranded at a secluded roadside museum are stalked by a masked assailant who uses his telekinetic powers to control the attraction's mannequins. So, yes, that's pretty on point for IMDb especially. You have... A group of young friends that get stranded here, played by Jocelyn Jones, who I'm not too familiar with. Tanya Roberts, who recently passed away. You might know Tanya Roberts from things like Beastmaster, was also a regular as Midge on that 70s show. View to a Kill, quite quite a pretty impressive roster of films that, uh, that she'd been in. And so these friends go to this tourist trap, hence the title. And it's run by Mr. Slauson, played by Chuck Connors. You might know Chuck Connors from his film career. Soylent Green, Old Yeller are probably the, the main ones. Flipper as well. But he also had a baseball career as well. Big dude coming in at 6'5". And he plays a pretty kindly old man here. And he's very welcoming. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you all with your car now. Oh, don't go in that shed. My brother lives in there. And then what makes this thing so freaky is everything's mannequins. That's sort of the the crux of this film, all the, where all the scares come from, is there's mannequins everywhere, and they come to life on their own. And a lot of them have this absolutely terrifying, angelic, ah, to it. That's probably the only time you'll hear me sing here, I guess, except for any music that I put on here. But they do that a lot. And it is some of the freakiest shit I've heard and seen. Still, very unsettling images. There is some great, great cinematography on display here as they kind of play with these mannequins and some of them are, are truly terrifying and i mentioned that pg rating earlier and it's kind of not surprising you're not going to get a lot of gore here there is some blood uh but most of the kills aren't uh gory this movie relies on fear in its set pieces and it's really incredible to see because I feel like nowadays it, we, we're so used to kind of mannequins being a prop, but this does it in a way that's still really unsettling. And it's incredible in how well it still holds up today. In this film, if you haven't seen it, I, I've got to recommend it. And it's also interesting to know, too, that Chuck Connors wasn't the first choice to play Slauson. The, the, I think they referred to him as Waxface in a, in a joke against Leatherface. But they initially wanted Jack Palance, who wouldn't do it. But I think he would have probably done a little bit more of a menacing job. Stephen King mentions this film in his book about how he believed Chuck Connors was miscast. And with Palance, it might have been just a completely different movie. And I don't necessarily disagree, but I do like the performance that Chuck Connors turns in. He's such a big, imposing figure, man. And then you see him wearing these crazy get-ups and everything, and it just goes off the rails. You loop in this weird thing of psychic powers I think that was Charles Band's idea and you just get this weird movie that's like a awful awful nightmare and like I keep saying truly some terrifying visuals people get turned into mannequins think of I guess sort of a house of wax meets Carrie might be a good synopsis and the ending on this movie isn't something I'm going to spoil if you watch me enough you know I don't really like to spoil films but 
The ending is still very unsettling. One of my favorites and one that I interpret differently or constantly go over in my head every time I see this movie because there's so many ways to interpret it. The director even mentioned how to him it meant something than what he read other people say and that's kind of incredible. I think normally that's done on accident and it's not always done on purpose but I think here having a film with such a an ending that can mean so many different things works so well. It's the right kind of question to ask. It's, it's fantastic. So, highly recommend this movie as you've, you've heard me geek out about this wonderful, wonderful piece. I've seen it countless times and I recommend you do too. Low budget, fantastic, great soundtrack. And if you don't like this movie, I'm going to be surprised. I don't even know what you're into. If you like PG movies, you're going to like this movie because this is probably the, the gnarliest PG movie I've ever seen. So, I am your host. Full Custom Hot Dog. You can follow me on Twitter. That's Full Custom Hot Dog without the last uh, because that is just too long for Twitter. So, thank you all for watching, and until next time. If you like what you see, I love what I see. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications so you can watch whatever comes next. And if you like the music you hear, you can follow me on SoundCloud and Spotify. Check the description for links.